Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our foundation level sample paper discussions. We are talking about the set C and we have covered all the five chapters so far in our set C tutorials and it's time for us to hit the remaining two questions of the chapter six. And yes, you heard it right. You just have two more questions uh, uh, to go from this entire syllabus. And at the same time, uh, the chapter six contributes uh, with two more questions out of 40 for the entire examination, but yet important. A lot of people think that just two questions is not going to be critical enough unless, uh, you know, drop out this chapter. But no, I would strongly suggest that you never know when you go wrong in the other five chapters and you have 24 marks with you. And these two questions of chapter six can help you boost that and make it up to 26 at least, right? So never unforeseen the situations and, uh, always try to anticipate that every single context, every single concept of this particular syllabus is quite important. And that's where we are talking about. I'm, I'm putting my effort to tell you everything, then why not you, right? So let's look at the next question from the chapter six, which is question number 39. And it says, you have just completed a pilot project for a regression testing tool. Now you understand the tool much better and have tailored your testing process towards it. You have standardized an approach to using the tool and its associated work product. Which of the following is a typical test automation pilot project goal that remains to be carried out? Now, the very first thing before you start looking at option at this point is to recall that what is a pilot project? What are the objectives of pilot project? And post completing a pilot project, what all those things are which will make your project or the tool utilization more successful in the organization. And there are several things which we have discussed in 6.2 when we spoke about the pilot project objectives and after pilot project, what all things should happen. So they have already told you that during the pilot project, we try understanding the in-depth of the tool uh, while practically utilizing that in one of the projects. And we understand that how exactly these things will help us, right? And uh, at the same time, you have many other things that uh, if there are improvement areas, uh, try updating your process, making changes to fit the use of the tool because the tool is not going to change for you. And or you have to define standard guidelines of using the tool. Do not let each team decide their own way of using it, right? and also define the various work products uh, which will be uh, created or utilized while working with this tool. Now it's time for you to understand what next needs to be done, which is awaiting as a part of the completion on the pilot project. Now let's look at the option one. The option A says, learn more details about the tool. That's something which is done during the pilot project and you have already completed a pilot project. So that's not something which is remaining for us to be done. During a pilot project, you do in-depth learning of the tool. B, see how the tool would fit the existing process and practices. In fact, that's also pretty much done during the pilot project itself. If you see the point number two, it says, you understand the tool much better and have tailored your testing process to it. So when you look at that second statement in the question, it says that B is already covered. So see how the tool would fit with existing process and practices has already been seen and you have already tailored those changes which are required to fit the best use of the tool. So B is also not valid. C, decide on standard ways of using, managing, storing and maintaining the tools and the test assets. The statement number three, that is you have standardized an approach to using the tool and its associated work product, which is test assets, right? So everything is also done. Now, I think you are clear that what is that which is remaining here? D, assess whether the benefits will be achieved at a reasonable cost. Yes, post pilot project, you would now do the real calculations to see how much effort you would still need in order to uh, make most out of this tool when you are utilizing. So pilot project would have given you all the real time statistics and data to support these calculations. And you will be able to figure out that will this invite any kind of additional maintenance cost? Is it expensive for us to use it in the real time? Or it is more than 
the initial acquisition cost. Of course, it is always more than initial acquisition cost. That's not a valid parameter though. But yes, if you think it's going to be more expensive to use the tool rather than just buying it, then it's a call for you to decide whether to go with the tool for the other projects or not. So that makes it pretty much simple that the right answer here is D, assess whether the benefits will be achieved at reasonable cost is next thing which you will be looking forward to and talk about as an outcome of the pilot project. Moving into the next and the last question of this particular chapter as well as this particular series of tutorials, right? The so question number 40, which of the following tools is most useful for reporting test metrics? Now, you know what are test metrics, which are certainly the test calculations. And these calculations tell you the progress on the project, specific from the testing side, because you say test metrics, right? And there are tools which have inbuilt and embedded test matrices, and you don't really have to do anything. You just have to go and click on that matrix, and it will populate those necessary reports, data tables, or graphs, which you really need to understand how the activity which you're talking about is progressing. In fact, you can populate a lot of matrices which you have learned throughout the syllabus. So let's have a look. What are the options for us to support that? A, test management tool. Yeah, test management tool is an overall test management tool. We include uh, requirement gathers or uh, gathering. You do have linking to the tests. You have executions, you have defects, you have configuration management. So everything is well managed within this one particular tool called as test management tool. And it's not, not just limited to test cases or test execution. You do have your baselining, uh, milestones, uh, overall release planning, etc. as a part of it, right? Including the defects, number of executions, and so on. So everything can be traced together and quickly some matrices can be populated as a part of the test management tool. Let's look at B, static analysis tool. Now, static analysis tool is only to conduct the code review using a tool, but does not give me any kind of test matrices. Same way for coverage measurement tool. It's more of like uh, talking about statement coverage, condition coverage, decision coverage, etc., which is an option to measure the unit testing outcome, right? The functional coverage and conditional coverage, but does not give me a test matrix as such. And D, model-based testing tool, these are used for creating UML diagrams to convert your requirements into business models, but certainly doesn't give me a test matrix again. So very straightforward and simple to understand that the right answer here is A, test management tool, which helps us to capture everything, all the information about the overall testing lifecycle, and at the same time gives us all the necessary reports which we are talking about. So no matter you're talking about ALM, you're talking about X-ray, Injira, they all give you all the matrices, right? So keeping it short and simple, that's all we had for this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.